is Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're involved right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. But I want you to listen to No Holds Barred Network. Welcome back to the No Holds Barred Network with another episode of Under the Ropes. I'm your host as always, the EVP of Giggles, the Heartbreak Chick, the Queen of the Indies, Tiffany. What is going on? And I have a special guest today, the beautiful valet, Riley Madison. How are you? I'm great. How's everyone else? Good, good, good. I'm so excited to have you on finally. I've been meaning to have you on. Lot. I know. I miss yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. It's been, I feel like it's been so long. I know. It's crazy. I, I just, oh, man. I, <laughs> it's been a long, long time. So I'm, I'm, I can't wait to get back into the indie world. I'm sure you as well miss it. 100%. 100%. Uh, 100%. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. So as as you guys know if you're first time here i interview independent wrestlers promoters refs ring announcers and today we're bringing on valet so i love to hear the stories in the independent world so i'm so excited for this one so you ready for this riley i'm as ready as i can be (laughs) all right so we want to know like how did you become a valet like how did you get into the business um Actually, so I went to a CZW show. Um, it was Tangled Web. I always forget the number, um, but it was when um, AR Fox and I think Strickland were, were, I think, wrestling each other. I don't remember. It was so long ago. Um, we, I was actually, Penelope Ford is one of my best friends. So uh, me and her went to a, a the CZW show, and then uh, at the end, DJ Hyde had approached us about, you know, coming to train or try out or whatever. And me, like, I'm a huge wrestling fan. I've been, like, in love with wrestling since I was six. So I was like, hell yeah, I've always wanted to, you know, like, be a part of, of the business. Um, so we ended up going to the training, our tryouts, our past tryouts, and we started training, um, I'd say, maybe a year into um, training at CCW, uh, I got a, a call from VOW to do, like, um be a manager for them, which if anyone doesn't know, BOW is Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Um, they're in like Pittsburgh, West Virginia area. Um, they're all deathmatch. So I was doing like deathmatch managing. Um, and then I kind of just like, from that platform, I kind of just started getting like um, people asking me to, to do other shows. I mean, I'm not super crazy right now with like different promotions, but uh, I mean, that's kind of all where it started was like from CCW to BOW. And I kind of just started branching, I guess, out. Oh, that's cool. See, I didn't know that. It's like I, I get to learn about you guys as well. So I didn't know that yeah. about that. So it's pretty cool. That's that's pretty awesome. I didn't know that. That's really awesome. So who has inspired you to get into the business? Uh, definitely Lita. I'm sure that's a given. Uh, <laughs> a total given. Uh, the Hardys were like my everything. Like Team Extreme was like my life. Um, their whole atmosphere of like every time they come out is like it's just a giant concert you know and like i'm a metalhead so anyone who knows me knows that i mean it's just one of those things where like you just feel everything that they have when they come out and to me that's so special and such like an awesome way to connect with fans um but that was always i always felt like an outcast so um but yeah like they they definitely i would say all three of them to be honest they were just awesome i'm a huge chris jericho fan too so um that was another another one for me. Um, but definitely, I would say mostly it would be the Hardys and Lita, 100%. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Um, so for the people who don't know you, like, what promotions have you worked for? Um, I've worked for, um, obviously, ICW, uh, No Holds Barred in New York. Um, I've worked for um, VOW, which is Outcast Wrestling. I've done, I still do um, Pro Wrestling Magic. Um, that's out of Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. Um, I always forget. I think it's 
PWT or PTW. It's a company in Maine. I think I'm it's the PD, worst. PWT, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the worst. At <laughs> I don't even know how I'm breathing right now. But, um, <laughs> like, no, no lie. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to think of anybody else. Like, um, I kind of stick with, like, I don't, I don't like to overwhelm myself with, like, um, a bunch of companies just because, like, I have a full-time job. I have a child. It's kind of, like, I got to balance, you know, my life. Um, but I'm trying to think of any. I can't really think off the top of my head right now, to be honest. That's, um, a, that's okay. I mean, your name is fun. There's been, been a few more. That's cool. I definitely want to try to go up to Maine because I know, like, I've had a bunch of people on the podcast as well that talk about PWT. So that's definitely I mean, a bucket list for me. I'm currently not working with them anymore just because um, scheduling conflicts. I believe Magic um, conflicts with them a lot. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of a big part of Magic, so I can't really – it's just becoming too much of a conflict. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the promotion was cool. I mean, I had fun. Everyone was so nice and professional. Like, I mean, I have nothing but great things to say about them. That's, that's just great. unfortunately it was a conflict issue. That's going to be a long ride too from like yeah. from you, <laughs> a couple hours. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I worked, I did um, C- CWF at Mid-Atlantic in North Carolina. I did that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so awesome. Uh, they did a whole CCW invasion um thing like three three years ago i'd say mm-hmm. it, was, it was a lot it was a lot of fun that was probably one of my favorites to, to work for was that it was oh. so much fun oh that's so awesome see like They're i didn't know these things i think always think it's like tri-state with a lot of people but you never know until you start talking to them or like where you work nope. and stuff yeah it's awesome so where's been the best indie crowd you've worked for oh man uh probably icw I hands down do. I love ICW. ICW is one of my favorite. I always tell people like they have to go check out like ICW. It's just definitely like one of like the best crowds. Like everybody's crazy, definitely into it. And now like now like they kind of like move to Jersey now. It's no more like ICW New York. It's New Jersey. I mean, but it's on the border, so it's kind of yeah. Know. It's not. It's not really. If, I mean, if you live in New York like me, it's yeah. really not that far. Maybe like an hour. Maybe even like depending where you live, but yeah. it's not even that far. It's definitely worth it, and um, I love the fact that it's on like uh, IWTV as well. Yeah, I I love the venue. Like the venue right now is, I I just love that venue. Um, it's huge, yeah. and I feel like it's just. I feel like whenever you go there, you're like it's like you're a crowded concert, like because it's just it's packed yeah. and you just it's just, you have so many like everyone's just so into it, and I just feel like that's like crowds are a huge uh, a huge part of, of a wrestling company. I know everyone everyone says talent and stuff, but yeah, but like if you don't have a good crowd or people that are ready for a show or like want to see it, like you're the show's gonna suck. Absolutely, like, you know. <laughs> so I, <laughs> yeah and like the venue too like the venue of how everything's organized and the way it looks and that's a huge part of it as well so i feel like i feel like you're doing a super super good job at what they're doing and their videos oh, yeah. are just oh it's crazy they're awesome even yeah. like uh, a lot of their when they're building up the storylines lately like shout out to isaac because i know like isaac does a isaac lot of those man. <laughs> yeah like he is oh my goodness like crazy like i love the last no holds barred of how they were like building it up it's such a shame that we're not going that um you know that it wasn't going down to florida for tampa right now because i was i mean i wasn't gonna go but i was so excited to see like on the iwtv app so. yeah it's definitely a bummer this year not to go to tampa yeah. i was actually very bummed because i had a couple bookings like i was like oh like i was supposed to do murder mania um mm-hmm. both nights but um and then i think something obviously with icw um so yeah. I was kind of bummed. Really wanted to do Murder Mania too. Yeah. But hopefully they're gonna definitely reschedule all of this, and we can just live our lives again because I want to go back. I, I know. Go. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I mean, I hope like soon, because again, like I said, like I miss all you guys. You know, I miss all the wrestling. Yeah. ICW is definitely a place to. I always preach about ICW, and you're right. Yeah. That venue is great because it was in what was that? Um, Astoria was it the last one and it was just like so crowded and so hot yeah <laughs> no the, the last one was um the last one was a jersey was yeah jersey. the one before it the one the last oh. one that was in new york was like oh it gets so crowded uh yeah uh, but like you said yeah. it's something about the crowd I mean, it's loud. People are so into it. Jack yeah. always books great stuff. Daddy books great stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, they're doing it. I mean, they're killing it. Um, I mean, it's. 
I mean, the tickets don't lie, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, they're obviously doing something very well. I mean, last time, I think they, I think Danny told me it was like, they sold over like 500 or 600 tickets. And I was like, yo, what? That's so sick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was, it was that. crazy trying to get through like the crowd. It kind of <laughs> felt like you were at like a concert, like exactly what yeah, you exactly. said. Exactly. You know how much I love them. So, yeah, that, that definitely. <laughs> Especially an environment that I love to be a part of. So. But I always tell people you have to support indie wrestling. It's it's such a great oh, yeah. thing. Like of course, like we have your main platforms, but um, but yeah, like the indie crowd, like in, the indie scene is so hot. Yeah, so hot it's, right now. Definitely, I feel like I feel like the indie scene is is, is definitely matured in the last couple of years. Oh yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah. I feel like it's, I mean, I've, I've been around it for like six or seven now. And I feel like I just to see it progress. has kind of been like really cool to watch. And like people that I've known, like, you know, when I train with and just watch where they are now. And like, it's just really awesome right now. Yeah. It's a really great time. You see more there. on like TV and like, uh, I mean, somebody reached out to me from Tampa, from the Tampa Bay Times, and they were writing an article a lot also with independent wrestling as well on top of mainstream. Awesome. So, I mean, I think it's really cool and it's really like you said, like it's booming. It's it's crazy. It is. So it's a crazy time, man. It really is. Yeah. It's like it's really definitely it's a good time for wrestling for sure. Absolutely. So what's been your favorite moment? If if you don't have one, we can do a couple, that's fine. Um personally or like in general watching like on TV? Or... Um, personally. Um I feel like taking Raver skewers or, or his not skewers his uh, his tattoo needles are pretty dope. That's probably my favorite moment I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, that was like so much fun. Um, that was probably my, my highlight of my of my managing or valet career. I think it was definitely I would like I would take them again. That's like they're awesome. yeah, like they were cool. I really really uh, that was it was a really cool moment for me to be, to be able to like be one to take those, you know. Oh, so that was really cool. Um. So, so I, I, I thought this was actually a cool question. What is your preparation? What's what? What, what was your, like, what is your preparation before, like, you come out as a valet? Oh, my God. I'm the, <laughs> I am the worst. Like, I, I, um, it's, it, it's real life, too, is I, I literally take forever to get ready. Like, it is a whole process. Um, <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> I, I like to shower the day of, you know, um, I like to wash my weave the night of, so it's dry and all that stuff. Um, and condition it real well. Um, I usually show up to, I usually show up to the venue, like kind of ready. Like my, I'll have to try my hair in at least. Um, then I'll start, I'll get there early. So I'll start doing my like whole process there. Probably takes me like three hours, you know, or so it's so bad. <laughs> Yeah, but you look beautiful every time, like, I see you, so you're doing oh, something right. <laughs> I hope it's worth it. It is a process. Like, this probably took me 30 minutes. It's not that great, but, I'm man. A... I was... I, <laughs> so I just, I, I am the, like, I don't know how anyone deals with me. Like, if I have to go somewhere with anyone, they know to tell me, like, two hours difference in time. <laughs> <laughs> because like I literally am the worst. Like I don't know how my boyfriend puts up with me. Um, he knows now to like, like kind of fall to the time a little bit. Um, but yeah, I am the absolute worst. I take forever to find clothes. I'm just I suck. I do it. I am the worst. It's, it's like your answer for everything. I suck. I suck. <laughs> uh, it's the truth. Like I'll I'll have an outfit and I'm like oh and I'm like already like oh hate this and i'm like scavenging trying to find something else and he's like dude you look like you look the same you just changed the shirt i'm like shut up you don't understand i know i definitely like no i mean i was busting chops because i love how you do your makeup and i was like oh man i was like i'm gonna like actually you need to like that's what you should do you should start a youtube channel and like do your makeup and stuff because like i love how you do your makeup i don't know that I am smart enough to operate a YouTube channel. <laughs> I really don't know that I'd be able to like actually figure that out. Or um, you can just like get something record, you know, like just do it and then just like upload it into YouTube because I think a lot of people would definitely appreciate it. So because I'm, like, I'm always like, damn, I said her makeup's always so beautiful. Like, I feel like 
I feel like I wouldn't. I feel like no one would watch it. That's not true. I feel like four people watch it. And be like, oh, that looks like every other one that out on. You don't know that. <laughs> I highly yeah, I doubt know. that. Well, I would definitely watch because I need to learn the ways because you always do such a great job. Well, if you if you get the next show, um, whenever that is, yes. you can get there early enough. You can get there early enough. All right. We'll All right. We're going to do that. You know what? We can, we can actually put it like on the channel or something like that. There we can go. do like another. Yeah. We can do an episode like, all right, we're, she's going to teach me how to do like my makeup like hers because she just she always looks great. I'm like, damn, you make me look so bad. <laughs> Thank you. No, for sure. I would definitely, I would definitely be down to do that. I just don't have a computer or any of that stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But I would definitely, that'd be fun. I'd yeah, be yeah. We should do that. We can make it like a little series or something. It'd definitely be cool yeah. to like see that. I'm down. So, all right, awesome. So, to the future or whatever. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. So, would you say your valet style changes depending on who you manage? Absolutely not. No, same. I, uh, I feel like. I am just Riley is Riley. Uh, and I mean, sometimes you got to kind of, so I'll, I mean, when I did black craft, oh, that was another company I worked for. I forgot how I forgot about that. Cause they're like my family. <laughs> but, um, so when I, when I did black craft, um, I managed Zicky dice. He's more of like eighties style. Um, if anyone knows me, I absolutely hate the eighties. <laughs> I know I'm getting a lot of flack for that, but I hate the 80s. Um, some of the music's okay, like the, the hair metal, um, but I just, I hate, I just, I don't know. I'm just, style-wise, is really not my thing. Um, and he's, you know, super bright colors, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't know anything bright. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Um, so, I, I mean, I kind of had to merge a little bit with him, but, like, I still be myself. So, I would say mostly no, but, I mean, there are times where you kind of have to. Um, I prefer not to, but I will, you know, obviously if I need to. Um, but that was a time where I kind of had to like wear hot pink and yeah. <laughs> you hated it. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just found a hot pink bra on a white mesh shirt and I was like, all right, I can do this. Like kind of lead up. <laughs> make you know, it, make it work. Like, I got it. I can do this part. Make it work. But, like I wore bright beads and like, I just, and he would tell me like, oh, you need to, you know, add more color in. I'm like, Zicky, I don't own any color. <laughs> like, I don't own color. <laughs> like, you just see me literally. That, really, I, so I have a hot pink um, tank top, and it's from Suck Me Crew, which is a clothing line, like, in, like a wrestling clothing line. Um, and I love them. So, obviously, but it, it's a nice hot pink. Um, it's tank top, it's a Suck Me Crew on it. So, I mean, I do wear that. That's pink. But I'm just not, I don't really wear color. I don't know right. if anyone's noticed that, but I just, like, don't wear color. That's okay. Everybody's got a preference, yeah, right. right? I think a right. lot of people wind up wearing black anyway. It's, like, rare to, like, start wearing like color. I think a lot of females do that. So. Yeah. No. Nope, not for me. <laughs> not for me at all. Okay, so what's been the most memorable piece of advice that someone's given you in the business? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> or if you have a few, that's fine too, because I know like, sometimes you yeah. can't just think on one. That's that's fine. Um, oh, wow. Um, yeah, there's so many. Um Basically, um, I believe it was uh, keep your mouth shut and your ears open. That was that's a very important one. Um, when you're told to do something or being trained, just do it. Yeah. Don't ask. Like I'm a big question asker. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really tough for me, and I learned the hard way. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a that's a really big one. I think in life too, that's a good thing to um, to really stick with right prevents a lot of problems um i mean i, I didn't really follow this rule but don't date in the business i never followed that one <laughs> i honestly and it's, it's like bittersweet because like i get it but at the same time when it comes to that it's like our schedules are i mean mine's not even crazy crazy but there's women and and, and men that are worse schedules are all over the place and right. like it's hard to date someone to understand that right definitely and, understand that uh, that business is definitely like the jealousy aspect i mean it's it's just easier to date someone in the business where it's like entertainment or in the wrestling. And just, I feel like it's, I guess it's a catch 22 yeah. in the same aspect. But um, another one was don't trust anyone. hundred percent. Yeah. And that's like a life one too. Life yeah. lesson. It's not DTA, just it's wrestling. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. So 
I'm wondering about this. Would you ever want to like uh, transition into an actual wrestler? My heart does. Mm -hmm. I um, I don't know that I'll ever be able to. Mm -hmm. Um, I, like I said, I have a kid, you know, she'll be 10. Um, I work full time pretty much. I just have a few injuries too, that I'm like worried about, um, that had happened to me when I was training years ago that just aren't the same. Um, I've had like, I know it sounds like corny, but I've had two like pretty bad uh, knee dislocations. So the next, um, the next time it happens, I have to get surgery. And honestly, like I can't afford to be out. Like yeah. I have. A, a child to provide for and, and bills and like a life. Um, I would, I would love to figure out a way, you know, maybe down the, down the line to figure that out because that's what I originally wanted to do. Um, I think I just need to get out of my head with it and, uh, kind of go from there. Right. But maybe one day. I mean, I would, I would love for that to happen, but just day by day right now. That, that's it. Who knows what can happen in, lot, in a year. A lot can change. A lot can change. Yeah. So we have it's never, yeah, go ahead. Out. Yeah. Okay, so we have a fan tweet. He's actually like your number one fan and Ooh, one of my friends. <laughs> she already knows because she knows me. <laughs> it's from Alex. <laughs> and Hi, Alex. <laughs> he has two questions for you. So he said, when will we see you at an actual match? And if so, who would it be against and why? That's the first one. Um, well, to answer that one, like I said, I, I don't, I don't know, uh, the wrestling aspect of it. I, I have no idea. Um, I can tell you that I'm going to start, uh, managing soon. I'm not telling you who, so I don't know if I'm allowed to do that yet, but I will definitely be back in, uh, the ring as far as, um, doing like managing and stuff. Um, so you guys would be probably excited for that one. Um, but yeah, like, I, I don't know. I mean, realistically, if you're asking who I'd like to wrestle in a ring, yeah. um, probably Maria Manic. Oh my goodness! Yes. Yeah. Oh my her. goodness! Give, uh, give me. Here's my money. Take it. Take it. Take it. Right? Would well, not be sick. She would kill me. <laughs> what a death wish! That would be. You know, that'd be it. That'd be my death wish. Right oh there. man, <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, that would be. That'd be so cool. That'd be like my dream match. I didn't. I didn't actually see that coming, but damn, I'm ready for it. Yeah, that it would be awesome to do that. Um, I mean, I. I, again, she's was at CDW too, um, and she's just done. Just, I'm so proud of her. Um, yeah. We're really close friends too, um, and like she's just killing it. And it would be an honor for me to like share a ring with her one day. I, I love for her. Sure. I love her. She's yeah. she's such a beast in the ring. Yeah, and, she is. Oh man. She takes nothing from no one, man. Even in real life, she don't take nothing. No. <laughs> she seems like that. Yeah. <laughs> this is so awesome. Okay, so his second question is, would you ever like to go to WWE? And if so, what female would you like to face? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's like, you know, the dream. something everybody wants, <laughs> ideally. Um, man, what if I don't see past or present. Um, Do both. That's okay. okay. <laughs> um, past, I'd say definitely Lita, 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, Hmm. I would say probably I would say Lita and Trish. Probably, yeah. Wow. I mean, I feel like they're iconic. Mhm. Mm That's awesome. Um, actually, Melina would be one too. I really, I really look up to Melina as well. I feel like, uh, I feel like that would be a really fun match to have too. Would be with Melina. She's but, great. Um, she's kind of in the in the present, I guess you could call past and present. Mm -hmm. Um, and. What was the other question? I forget. <laughs> uh, no, well, he said like like current as what well, like current. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So, oh, man. Um. My page. Oh I yes, I like it. I definitely, so I definitely like, like it. That'd be like a super fun match. Yeah. Probably Paige or AJ Lee. Wow. I know she's kind of cast again, but whatever. So since you like asked these questions, it kind of like gave me like a thought as well. Like, if if you could like valet somebody. In maybe like WWE or maybe like AEW or and then maybe we could do the indie scene too. So maybe like current, TV, like if you TV and indie. Yeah. Um. Wow. Uh, I never. I've never been asked that before. 
<laughs> Gotta keep you on your toes. <laughs> I, I feel like, yeah, I, I mean, style-wise, like, aesthetically, I feel like Alistair Black would be cool. Because I feel like we'd fit. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he really needs, like, a valet. Mm-hmm. But, like, I feel like that would be a cool mix because we're kind of the same, like, style. Right. Um, oh, man. So, uh, that would be for that. AW, I mean, I don't know. They're all awesome. I just... I don't know. I would. I have to trust them on that one, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Definitely trust them on that indie scene. Um, again, I always go for aesthetics because I feel like for me, it's not for everyone, but I always feel like aesthetically matching or you know, kind of being in the same style. I feel like is it, it has a presence and mm-hmm. a look. Doesn't mean you can't have someone who's completely opposite and somebody right. who's you know different. But I, I feel aesthetically. I mean. I, I, I like. I mean, I, I can see myself. It's hard in the Indies. It's really yeah, hard. Yeah, there's um, a lot. There's so yeah. many. Just a, a couple that come to mind as far as like aesthetics would be like Lord Crew. Like we would match. I feel like really well. I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's pretty cool. You should check him out. Um, I'm trying to think. Of, I mean, dang, I've never been asked this before. This is tough. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is like a man. Yeah, like, there's, there's, there's a lot. To say. I just think of Lord Crew. I like it. He's, he's got tattoos and everything. Mm-hmm. That's uh, okay. That's good. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely. Like, I don't know good. why I'm drawing a huge blank right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know that's the problem with like some of these countries. Like, hmm, makes you makes you Honestly, like really that, think. Like, I would I would love to manage Raver too. I mean, I think that'd be really fun. Yeah, uh, G Raver. That'd be yes. really really fun. Love him. Uh, yeah, I honestly I love deathmatch. So any anything in deathmatch would be like, it's like my ideal as far as like I love managing deathmatches. Oh my goodness! That's, that's I cool. always I always ask people about like would they do a deathmatch? Oh so my God, I'd love would you to. do one? Like if if you were like oh, yeah. trained, would you do one? Who would yeah, you do? A, who would you like to? Who would you like to wrestle in a deathmatch? Uh, dang. <laughs> um, I could see you and Casey Catal going at it. Yeah, I mean that that'd be fun. Um. Definitely. Uh, I, I mean, me and Maria. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I feel like if me and Maria had like a death match, like it would be <laughs> lit. Like it would be so good because we, I trust, you know, I trust each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm honestly like, I, dang, that's a tough one. Yeah. I would, I think I would again. I would like to wrestle Raver. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I could see like even with Jimmy Lloyd because I know he's like one of your good friends oh, as well too. Yes, that would <laughs> that would be a really fun match. I feel like if I yes, yeah. well someone else would book it one day. That'd be a three way. Me, it. Jimmy Lloyd, and Marie Man. There you go. <laughs> it would be like a whole whole death match extravaganza. Book it. Do it. Book it. I want to see it. Book it. I want to see it. <laughs> I, I think it would be like so much fun like and then, like I had Casey Catal on and we were talking like I told her I was like I want to talk about your death match with him and it was just so funny and I was like I, I can't like these girls today like they're tough as shit yeah. man I yeah. I can't believe compared to like when I was little you know to where we're at now and that we're having like intergender matches and even like the death matches it's crazy so awesome that's why i'd love to manage because i i get i get to be involved in it you know like like i said i had um bow i took um raver's tattoo needles and that was like, like i said it was an honor and then i got really kind of messed up um in that match i had like I had, it was a whole ordeal um i had stitches oh wow in my, and not not from him it was from i i guess i like kneeled on glass and i was dumb mm-hmm. it was a glass match um and like when I was getting away from him, I like I must have sliced my knee, but I didn't know I did. Um, but I also like I like I got a big piece of glass was like in my hand, and my hand was hurting so bad I thought I cut a tendon. And I'm like, oh, so oh, I have wow. health insurance at the time. And I'm like, this is just great. Um, and I went back to have the EMT look at it, and he was like, uh, I'm more concerned about your knee. And I'm like, what? And I looked down and just just gushing. Oof. And I'm like, oh, sick. You know, I, I look good. <laughs> I guess I'm weird, but. Um, <laughs> So yeah, um, they I had to go to the hospital. Um, they wanted to look at my hand. They unwrapped it because uh, at this point I couldn't even like my hand was so painful. It was oh, wow. like uh, I literally thought I caught a tendon. Um, they took it off and they're like, "Oh yeah, let me just like I thought like a scab, you know, was on it or whatever." Yeah. Um, no, they decided to pull out a glass like this big Ooh. out of my hands. No numbing cream, nothing. I didn't know they were pulling anything out. I'm like convulsing because it's literally cutting me on the way out of my hand. On top of just getting like 
five shots of Novocaine in my knee, my wound in my knee to yeah. get like uh, to get stitches. I was like not having it. Ooh. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It's part of it. But yeah, absolutely. You, just, you never know what's gonna happen. That's the point. Is you never know what's gonna happen in those matches. And right. You know, that's, that's the best part of it. I've, I've, part of it. I've seen it. Like, you know, like you've seen the injuries with wrestlers, you know, and, and it, it doesn't matter. Like everybody could say like, it's fake. It's, it's, it's not, you still take bumps and. Yeah. It's cool though. When you, when you go like, cause for VOW, I was the only um, girl pretty for the most part in the locker room consistently there full time. And, um, and everyone just walks around with like, you know, face masks of blood and they're you know just like living their best life back there and i'm like this is such an awesome environment like some people will be freaking out right like ew like (laughs) grow up we all have blood you know it's just cool it's it's just funny to watch them just chilling back there you know kicking their feet up like what (laughs) i mean you've taken bumps too like i've seen you even with uh danny demonto at icw you took bumps i was like oh is she a champ like yeah uh i was i i always get a little nervous for them um but like, it's all good. So yeah, as long you as just never know, they, you know, what could happen. But. As long as they protect the hell out of you, and I don't even like with Dan, like yeah. I can see it. Like now I'm starting to like pick up on certain stuff. So like I yeah. even knew with that, like he totally like protected you like insanely. Like yeah. I knew that. Uh-huh. So it's definitely like who you trust to like. I, yeah, exactly. Let that. Somebody I I super trust, obviously. Yeah. Um, I just yeah. I mean, it was it was definitely fun. I I just love getting involved. Yeah, um, in matches, I feel like it's. I feel like a manager of LA is so important to some people, right? Uh, and just to tell a story, it's just it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I love it. Um, so what is like your long term goal in the business? Um, I would love to be signed one day, a hundred percent. I feel like it's anyone's goal. Um. I just want to continue having fun what I'm doing, you know, get more exposure and, and kind of build myself, um, challenge myself and kind of just, I guess one day just, ha- I have this vision of like what, what I want. And like, as far as like in a time frame of, of like, like now I'm getting older, I'm like, you know, you always get nervous. You're like, Oh, you're like, you're like almost 30. It's like, I mean, I'm 27, but, um, you're always like, oh, you know, like you, you get in your head, like, oh, it has to happen now, it has to happen tomorrow, it has to happen next year. And I'm trying to, like, chill with that and uh, just kind of take it day by day um, and, and, and just continue to work on on the character that I want to be and the person that I am in the same time to hopefully one day just achieve just being signed one day. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's – I want to travel. I love to travel. Traveling is my favorite. I love road trips, and I just want to keep traveling and, and working with companies and – just building Riley Madison. That's like my, my number one. Mm-hmm. 100%. Oh man. Where, where would you like to travel to? Like where, where would be like a bucket list like that you could be a valet at like work? Like company wise company or like, you know, like, would you go like, would you love to go to like Japan? Like, I mean, I don't know like how that would like, you know, dojo wars I, and stuff like, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't want to be disrespectful. I mean, Japan wouldn't be my first. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm not, I'm not, fully wrestling so yeah it might be different if that was right. the situation because you know, japan is amazing with right. wrestling for me um it wouldn't i don't think it would benefit me as well just because i'm not really wrestling mm-hmm. um i think if i was wrestling my, my opinion would be different right but honestly just traveling anywhere like i mean i've been to a lot of places um i haven't wrestled at these companies but i've you know i've been on road trips and with other like other workers and uh, we just kind of travel and ex- i like to explore different cities and states when i'm there um i also like to check out like graveyards mm-hmm. i feel like that's uh I'm like a weirdo but i know I, <laughs> <laughs> I did that in new orleans because like they're known for their graves yeah i'm so mad i wanted to go to that too oh. and i just for like just that's one of the main reasons why i wanted to go to new orleans and mm-hmm. i i didn't get to go and i was so upset because i heard all about this like this awesome graveyard. it's it's interesting i went for a couple of days and then they have like the graveyard tours and it's really interesting oh, to see oh, was... like the beads and the broken alcohol and some of the graves and stuff it's pretty like so yeah. you're not a weirdo so it's like it's like there are places that like you could go and go see that and it was just like one of the things that like it was like known in like new orleans so I was like, oh, okay, I want to go check this out. Like, There's a beautiful interested. cemetery in Dayton, Ohio. I forget the name of it. I haven't been there in so long, but it was probably one of the most pretty. Like, it was just, it looked over the entire city of Dayton, and it was, like, on these really cool hills, and, like, 
it was just like it was just it's beautiful you can walk through it like i would go it's just it's I wish I could remember the name, but it's like, it's beautiful. It's probably my favorite one. One of my favorites I've ever been to. That's cool. It's, so I wish I could remember so people could check it out if they're weird like that. But it's like, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you remember, thing, let me know and then we'll, I'll put it in the description. Yeah, it was, <laughs> or I'll put it in the comments. It was, so, it was so beautiful. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have a fan tweet uh, from Kyle. Kyle works with me on, well, Kyle's the owner of the No Holds Barred Network, which we're on right now. Um, and I don't know if you're very aware of my list of husbands and the list of wives thing that I had kind of started on it with all, with all my husbands and stuff like that. Actually, you're on my list of wives, right? Oh. Where we had to do like... <laughs> I think you're on a lot of what people's. Number am I? <laughs> you're number one, man. You're all number right, one. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. You're number one a fan. Alex, me and him got into a big fight in the car one day driving. We were going to an indie show and we were having a conversation about the list of husbands and the list of wives because it's fun to flip it. Like me, because like I'm known for my list of husbands, but I've done the list of wives as well. So yeah. we kind of flipped and stuff like that. He was arguing with me. He's like, no, you can't have her at your number one. I was like, why not? I was like, she's number one. I don't care like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. so <laughs> i love all this stuff it's all it's all good fun so anyway so kyle you know my co-host on the all elite podcast okay he said would you valet kyle masters to the ring hashtag list of a list of wives <laughs> i think alex will beat you kyle for asking that question just so you maybe know. i shouldn't answer this question <laughs> Maybe I should protect um, myself and just say, I'm going to have to pass. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> cool, Sorry, no hard feelings, but. <laughs> okay. So my infamous question, I ask everybody this because I love hearing the crazy stories from everybody. What's been the craziest thing a fan's done to get your attention? Uh, um... I remember when I was at a CZW show and I was a student there. I would have to, like, you know, work the shows and, and set things up. I remember me and Penelope went out to the car because we were getting ready. Or we were coming back or something. We were leaving real quick to go, like, to Wawa or something. And um, I remember we were, like, in, like I was driving and I, I look over and there's some creep just, like, at my window. Uh, it, was at, it, was at, it was at Penelope's window. And I'm, like, oh, man. uh, uh <laughs> he had, like, pictures in his hand. Like, like weird like not even like um not even like 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 wrestling pictures it was like it was like just i don't know it was we like for us to have that happen to us so soon i think was freaky because like the where we park you're not really supposed to have it's just like where all the workers are right so we were kind of startled like this what is this guy gonna do like he could you know he could essentially anything because there's no one back here right not supposed to be back here um, that was very creepy, and all they wanted was uh, Penelope to sign a picture. <laughs> but it was just like weird how it, it just like came to my car. Oh like, my god! You know what I mean? Like we, just, I think we were getting ready to leave. I think we we're getting ready to leave to go somewhere. So they like followed. Like it was kind of, it was a little creepy. Um, we never met them before either. Right. It was just a, it kind of startled us in an aspect of like what? Right. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> That's so creepy. Yeah, let me just get out my Sharpie and sign that for you. Like, you just scared the hell out of me. Like, what? Guys, take notes. Don't do things like that. It's creepy. Do not follow women workers anywhere. Do not yes. follow them anywhere. Don't yell at them across the gas station. Don't walk in and say, how you doing? Like, like I don't want to talk to you. I don't <laughs> like people. Like be, I love people. Be normal. Like, I, yeah. I you know, oh, my goodness. There's like a way of going on about um, right. a lot of things with women, but there's definitely a thousand ways to not yeah stuff and that that was definitely on my list of not to do yeah please don't yeah, it's crazy because it's even like regular life too. It's not even you know yes. like you you know be working in the wrestling business. I mean, I get yeah. it too. Like I get the creepiness too. So I feel you. I think okay. we were talking about that okay. one day you and me at ICW, and I was like, you yeah. know, people are creepy. Like how they react, yeah. and there's like a way to act, and like you there know, is, there's a there's, way. There's a level. There's a level of respect too. Like I mean. um, when you have fans that you you know for a period of time, like there's different levels of respect aspect too that some can get away with and some can't. Um, right. 
I, I can't think of any that personally happened. I'm sure there has been. Yeah. I just can't think of any personally right now. That's I'm sure that's fine. Get all, I'll remember. <laughs> um, I just get a lot of weird messages. Yeah. Uh, very weird ones, but I mean, that's I'm a, a female, so I'm not the only one. Yeah. I, I think TJ Marconi told me that when I start getting acts for in DMs about the clothing, the acts for my clothing, he goes, "That's when you made it." <laughs> Yes. Like, yep. um, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. 100%. That's, that, 100%. that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, which ha- since, like, we're going through all this crap with the pandemic and everything like that, what you been doing to keep busy? Oh, my God. I've been going crazy. Um, I'm a big outside person, and I'm also super emo, so I like to have my own time. But, like, I love outside when it's myself. I want to, like... Just sit outside somewhere with my friends and just like hang out and like I can't do that, so I've been going nuts. Um, I mean, I've been me and boyfriend playing like a lot of games, like wrestling games. Um, his friend just got uh, Nintendo sixty four, so he just got like uh, it was a WCW game for that. So that's been really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got No Mercy, which we haven't played yet. Um, we just been like I just kind of been like just watching wrestling. I've literally been watching. So WrestleMania 17, I think it was, 2001. Mm-hmm. Um, from that on, I've been watching Raw from 2001, the oh, wow. day after WrestleMania. I watched WrestleMania, and then from that on, I've just been watching all the Raw from 2001 and the pay-per-views. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's literally, that's literally what I've been watching. I think I'm at, I'm actually at No Mercy right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. I know a friend that was doing that. He was watching like the Raws, and then he would watch like the pay-per-views, and then he'd like continue on. I was like, that's cool, because... At all. I mean, me, I, like, I don't watch, I don't watch WWE anymore, but, like, when I think of all that, like, I go all the way back to, like, in the 90s. Like, that's what I grew up, like, watching. Like, that was, that was, like, fun, and I love the yeah, storytelling and stuff, so. It, it brings you back that, that feeling. Of, yeah. Um, of, like, I just feel like that time period was, like, the best time period in wrestling ever. Yeah. It was just, it was so unpredictable. You could lose, you know, a belt. Yeah. Whenever. It wasn't just certain, it was just such a very like a uh, very unpredictable time period and that's what was amazing about it and not that it's not amazing now as far i just i don't have cable really i have it on my phone but it's kind of a pain to watch so like, yeah. that's why i don't necessarily watch a lot of WWE. but i mean i, I do watch like all the pay-per-views and i, I keep up on it um when i like, have like good service or something i'll watch like the um brawls and stuff but yeah that was definitely my time my favorite time period was like the 2001 so i like i i can't go back to do raw and smackdown it's just too much back and forth yeah i, I just watch the raws were always the most exciting for me, yeah so. what's what's some of your favorite matches oh man um definitely um uh, wrestlemania 17 the uh tlc match mm-hmm. parties and uh edge and christian dudley's like that was like my i love that match yeah. um I think Trish's retirement match was one of my favorites. Um, are you talking about in general or 2001? In general, that's fine. Like, because the alliance, the alliance, like the whole invasion, the alliance thing was like probably my favorite mm-hmm. whole angle in that time period. Uh, so like, I can't really give you just a specific match. No, that's that, that, that's so fine. So many during that time period, it was uh, it just can't look away. Um, yeah, I mean, there's. Honestly, that's what sticks out to me right now. Awesome, awesome. That's fine. That's fine. I'm, just, I'm a huge older wrestling nerd when it comes to like the '90s, 2000s. I think a lot of people are. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think. I think. Ruthless aggression was a fun era too. I yeah. So I have one final question. Um, so it's it's good because like you know I ask this everybody as well, and everybody's got different pieces of advice. So. What kind of advice would you give someone trying to get into the business or trying to become a valet? Um, expect to work your butt off, um, not only just in the ring, but to, as a respect aspect. Um, you're not always going to just gain someone's respect right away. Um, there's people that you're going to have to really earn it. Um, you may care, may not care, but at the end of the day, like having respect in the business is a, is a really big part of it paying your dues is a big part of it um doing your homework and not just in the ring but you know like outside like watching matches and studying um you know like how they're telling you a story and and why this makes sense and um try and put it into your your character of your heel you want to be a baby face like you gotta 
kind of, I guess, figure out like what you want to be um, and then start watching people that are similar to you or watching how they like I always give like the hurricane is one of my favorite wrestlers. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, like my favorite. He had like, the best gimmicks in the world. Like he was never out of character. He just literally was just I love watching. Like right now he just started peeking into the, the hurricane gimmick. So I'm just like I'm popping for it. So right. Happy. <laughs> like, the her cycle like every he he literally made and this fight isn't the best example for me it just sticks out because he's one of my favorites but like he just was always in gimmick he's always in character right he's just awesome. like he is her cycle like the way he spoke like he just he had your attention the whole time and that's something that you need to find within yourself um what you want to be and how to establish that but i mean you just gotta work your butt off man don't trust anyone um and just just focus on you and what you want to do and progress from there don't worry about anything else at the point just just be you that's, and that's, just do it just nail it <laughs> that's great advice don't I'll... ever give up don't ever give yeah. up because there's so many times where i was just like you know f this like I- i'm not gonna do anything right like you're gonna mess up a lot a lot but it's how you you rebuild after that how you pick up after that right you could mess up mess up mess up but if you're you're showing that you're trying and you're, and you're, you're doing the best you can you're still gonna get people's respect right at the end of the day, it's kind of a life lesson too, I guess. But that's that's great advice, definitely, yeah. definitely. So tell everybody where they can find you if they want to find you. Um, so Instagram, um, it is at Riley is Madison. So it's R I L E Y I S M A D I S O N. I think, I believe my Twitter is the same one. I think I try to do that. It's I don't I won't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Um and um Facebook's just Riley Madison. Uh, that's pretty much it, I think. That's all I have right now. I'm trying to get like a whole merch um through the Indie Connect starting soon. Um so just keep your eyes open for that. I have a lot of awesome ideas that are coming out. Um that no one I don't think anyone has right now, so that's be really cool. Right. Also eight eight by tens, um I'm working on figuring out i don't know if i can print anything right now because i don't know if their photo centers are open not really essential but uh if people want eight by tens like i have no problem sending them out um, i just gotta figure out how to print them because i don't have a computer oh i think i think i have an idea i'll talk to you offline for that as well oh. i mean she's oh. got gorgeous eight by tens like i when i see her all the time she really has got like these gorgeous you take some great photos yeah. like I mean, I don't know who, like, takes the photos or whatever, like, but you have some really great photos, like. I mean, it's, like I said, it takes forever to get ready. You gotta work the <laughs> angles, you know. Filters are nice. When I see her, she makes me take about, yeah, she makes me take about, like, ten pictures, right? You're always like, no, I, let me see. Don't post that. I need to see it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, let me see it first. With Tiffany, too, like, when I, when I see Tiffany, like, she's the same way I am. So I'm like, all right, perfect. I don't got to worry about saying, hey, can we take another one? She's the yeah. same way. I'm like, you know, here, so look. She's like, nope. Awesome. I don't like this. Yep. Okay, not a problem. Yeah, Let's okay, keep going. You know, <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. I'm so annoying. I don't know how no. I feel with me. No, you're fine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're you're amazing. Like I said, you know, I, I appreciate that you came onto the podcast. Uh, we're definitely going to do this. We're going to definitely, when, when all this is lifted up, yeah, we're going to do the, the makeup thing and I'm going to record it. And then, I'm so down for it. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Without makeup, but that's going to be a- Yes. We'll bring, uh, I'll bring my friend April as well because she, she's a big makeup artist too. So I would just love like all of us like to like, hang out we could do some yeah. videos and stuff so that'd be kind of like fun that'd be really fun i'm sure i'm sure danny wouldn't care um if you guys came early to the venue oh yeah yeah definitely the whole, like, the whole back area would be perfect yeah yeah it'd be fun it's hey look it's... vanity and everything it's perfect <laughs> great exposure for icw <laughs> yeah there's a beautiful lighting like it's it's awesome you walk back there it's like like one of those like ban- it's like a yeah giant long mirror it's got the the really bright bowl yes <laughs> It's got like stools and like a little tape. It's great. It's long. Like it's. I was like, dang. <laughs> like I, I need this in here. my bathroom asap right now. <laughs> yeah, they got long mirrors. I'm like, yo, this place was designed for me. Like, <laughs> so crazy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Any 
anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in for Under the Ropes episodes 25. Thank you again, Riley Madison, so much. I, you know, it, this was fun chatting with you. Got, <laughs> guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm your host, as always, the EVP Giggles, the Queen of the Indies, the Heartbreak Chick. So, and we will talk to you soon. <laughs> There's something you owe me Get it